locals that we work with in Vancouver. So Paul Farrell is the president of QP15, and I saw him here today. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, QP407, Brent Boyd, we work hand in hand together in solidarity at board meetings and speaking for public education on a daily basis. And 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 teachers are work so well with their QP colleagues. So I with I want to really introduce, give a warm welcome for Barry O'Neill, president of B QPBC. Welcome, sisters and brothers. It's great to be here. And in every other rally we've been at. My friends, parents, students, I want to firstly bring you greetings from the 85,000 members of CUPE British Columbia. And more than that, I just received a memo from Brother Moyes, as did Susan Lambert, on behalf of the 620,000 members that we represent from coast to coast to coast. We will be with you every step of the way in this fight. So the question I have, I guess, for those who watched the news last night, Christy Clark is wondering why you're all here. She said everything is pretty well resolved and we've kind of made up our mind, so why would anybody come to a rally like this? Well, let me give you a couple of reasons, Ms. Clark. Let me give you a couple of reasons for that. That the trade union movement and workers all across this province and all across this country have never asked anybody whether or not they should have a collective agreement. We have never been ones to say, we need to provide, so you need to give. We took collective agreements in this country because this country needed them. And when she starts to talk about economies, she needs to understand one thing. It's a result of those contracts that we are, workers in this province and this country, really are the engine of this economy. My friends, my friends, what's happening in this province is just out of this world. Nobody would understand anywhere else how a government could talk out of both sides of the mouth and talk about justice. And what is justice? It seems to me that justice in this province is for those that have and those that have not get nothing. That, my friends, has got to change. You know, sisters and brothers, we have seen this happening. We've seen this happen across this province for the last 10 years. And I'm so, plop, so proud to be here to say to teachers everywhere that teach across this province from small school district to large, that we really do appreciate what you do. And if you stop doing what you do, then the kinds of things that are happening as we speak where our Ministry of Jobs and Tourism is in Ireland talking to workers there and asking them to come to British Columbia because we had 338,000 new jobs that will be in place by 2014. And here we are, the very same government, taking away from our children their ability to learn. Let me tell you, Ms. Clark, you bring those 338,000 jobs to our province and we'll find young people with more energy and more ability that can take care of your concerns and employment for the next 60 years. You don't need to do that in Ireland. And then we have Mr. Falcon. Now, Mr. DeFalcon and I don't have the best of relationships. No, it's true. It's true. But Mr. Falcon sits in Victoria and talks about justice and those picketers yesterday and those people that stood out in rallies that they have to learn to abide by the law. It's absolutely incredible to me that a government who's been before the courts 
probably more than half the criminals in British Columbia and found guilty is so, it is so emphatic around we need to go by the law. You know, the last time I looked at governments and the motto was always for the people, not screw the people, for the people. We are the people. We're not only teachers, we're not only support staff, we're the people that live in those communities. We have those children and we won't sell the rights of our children in this generation or the next generation or the generation to come for a collective agreement. But we demand, we demand, and it's upon us now to understand that we have one thing to remember. We cannot, we cannot ever leave our children any less than was left to us. That was a promise given to them, and that's a province that we need to pull through on. My friends, it's not over. It's not over. And it's so great to see unions from all over our province here to talk about really is what the fundamental, what the fundamental right of a child in this province is. Yeah. And that's to get educated. Yeah. To get educated in their community, to make sure that they're the ones that can carry on for their kids. Yeah. What's happening here is more serious than I have ever seen in this province. A blatant attempt to take back retroactively for 10 years all of the gains of those before us. That, my friends, is not tolerable in any society. Friends, let me leave you with, let me leave you with something because there has got to be a whole bunch more of this. And there are many unions there are many people in this province will be facing the same dilemma if we don't do something significant. And my friends, although it seems difficult when you go back to your community, when you go back to your district, when you go back to where you live and talk to your kids, and they say, what can you do? Remember those famous words by Margaret Mead who said, don't ever think that what you do can't make a difference because it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you all. Solidarity. Take care.